In America's present-day public schools, the most common policy for dealing with disciplinary and safety issues is zero tolerance. This means that the consequence for behavior such as violence and drugs, as well as some other less severe behaviors, is often removing the student from school in the form of suspensions and expulsions. For years, zero tolerance has been the status quo means of addressing these issues. But the data shows that this is not working for our students. While this policy is intended to have positive effects on school environments, the facts show otherwise. Unfortunately, instead of resolving the problem, suspension policies often push students who are viewed as troublemakers out of the school environment, allowing for more opportunities to get into trouble. Suspensions often lead to more misbehavior in school and more suspensions. Up to 40% of school suspensions are given to repeat offenders. Instead of solving the problem and fixing the behavior, suspensions just remove the problem for a short period of time. The high rate of suspensions and expulsions has created a phenomenon called the school to prison pipeline in which students, especially those who are low income and minority, are exited from the school system and pushed into the criminal justice system. Education stakeholders are now asking themselves, what can we do? What will be a more fair and effective approach to the massive problem of school discipline? Well, have you ever heard of restorative justice? Restorative justice is the idea that students need support to truly learn from their mistakes and help repair the damage they have done. Restorative justice has three main goals, accountability, community safety, and competency development. Some ways of implementing this in practice are peacemaking circles, mediation or conferencing, often between victim and perpetrator, and a peer jury. You might be thinking, okay, restorative justice sounds great, but does it actually work? Well, we believe it does, and it's worth a shot. Take this one example of a middle school in Oakland, California. They started a restorative justice program in 2005. Before the program, they were suspending one-third of the student population. If that doesn't sound bad enough, 60% of those suspensions that year were of students who were repeat offenders. After the integration of the program, suspensions dropped by 10% in the next school year. Also, less than 20% of the sp suspensions were for repeat offenders. Not only did the program decrease the suspension rate, after two years of implementation, the school's test scores went up significantly. It's cases like this that make restorative justice seem like such a promising alternative to the policy that is not serving our students at the moment. Zero tolerance.